being an editor for Thornton is actually really fun. I get to do things like this, right? Look at this, look at this. This makes people's heads go big. What would happen technically if I just, you know, look at that. Whoa, please don't fire me. Hey, it's mini Thornton. Thornton's tiny. Hey everyone, Thornton Smash here, and today we're going to be talking about some good news and some bad news for Apex Legends. Now there's the new stuff about Lifeline Reborn, her brand new rework that looks absolutely awesome. But there's also some bad stuff because, well, EA is once again doing what EA does best. So we're going to go over everything that's going on with Apex Legends this week in the first one of Season 21. However, we're also going to go ahead and give out some of the guitars. All you guys got to do is like, comment, subscribe, and we'll give out some of that new currency so you guys can customize or get whatever stuff you want in the game. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about Apex Legends. All right, so let's actually talk about some exciting stuff. I'm sure by now most of you have heard about the brand new Lifeline Reborn coming, and it does seem to be it will be in Season 22, or at the very, very latest, Season 23. And thanks to Kral Rindo, who has been absolutely fantastic lately, we have a lot of new information about her abilities, such as her new passive. He explained that it will be called Combat Revive. It's the same as the current passive, so it will still have that healing effect. However, she can also glide in the air. I believe it was for 3.5 seconds. He said it was an error on the 1.5. By holding onto her dock drone, time can be extended with Evo. This is actually useful for switching a rooftop instead of having to climb back up, especially because Lifeline is such a short character. I don't think anyone's realized that because she's so short, this is actually pretty good for her. Now, her tactical has been changed as well, the DOC heal drone. It's the same as the current tactical, but it can follow you and your teammates now. You can command Doc in AS physics just like in season three. I know a lot of people out there right now are like, why? Why couldn't we get the same thing with Crypto's drone where we could remotely control it? Which I imagine that if this takes off very well, Crypto will probably get the same treatment in the near future. Now the ultimate is the most interesting one, and we've known about this for a while, but it is called Shockbot 3000. And you place a destructible bot that forcefully ejects enemies from the area. Bot can be destroyed, bullets can pass through, but enemies can't get inside. And this has the potential to be the most broken end game ability we will ever see in Apex Legends. Imagine a final ring with a couple of teams like in an ALGS situation and someone throws this down and knocks someone into zone, instantly killing them with the ring ticking damage. It has the potential to be absolutely insane. Oz did let us know some other stuff about it, Back in around October 8th, the only thing that's really changed according from Oswald's leaks are really the passive, which we now know, and seems overall very powerful. It's also changed a bit from when we originally got the leak about it from the original leaker called True Serum 26, who was a playtester for Apex Legends and Respawn. The tactical is pretty much exactly what both Kral and Oz have said, and the ultimate shocks enemies in a certain radius is pretty, once again, accurate to the T. So it's kind of cool to see stuff like that happen where we get it leaked so long ago and now we finally see it in. There's also one other huge upgrade to this and this will be impacting all support legends, but throwing healing items, think of shield cells, shield bats, medkits, you can actually now throw them as grenades to heal other players. I have no idea how this will function in game and how to optimize and choose it, but I will say, dang it, it looks like we're probably never gonna get the cryo grenade that was that of mine so long ago. Just kidding. The cryo grenade, from what I understand, got turned into one of Catalyst abilities. But grenades have always come and gone, so do keep in mind that while it is likely this is going to be a support perk that gets upgraded, wait till it actually comes in game along with the other abilities because things change. We still never saw the cryo grenade, finally. Now, when Lifeline Reborn does come, it will be coming with a brand new mythic skin and she will not be getting a remodel like Revenant Reborn did. Do keep that in mind, which wouldn't really make sense because, you know, she's alive and organic. Regardless, it will likely be in season 22, as that was when it was alleged by Osvaldo Tori and others back in around September that it will be coming one year from now, season 22. Also keep in mind this season we are getting the Pathfinder Mythic, which makes a lot of sense. So we get Pathfinder now, and then next season we get Lifeline Reborn with her Mythic skin and the brand new Suitsamo map, or at least that is the hope as it is pretty much completely done. Now there's a lot of cool stuff that we just went over. However, EA is, like I said at the beginning of this video, being EA. We've seen it pretty aggressive here. You know, this season we have all these new guitars that you have to spend money on with the new exotic currency. If you like this kind of stuff, it's totally awesome. It is your money and at the end of the day, you don't have to spend anything you don't wanna do. 
And EA and Andrew Wilson, the CEO, have made it very clear that they're planning to use generative AI to drive monetization and make development 30% more efficient. Whether or not it becomes more efficient or just breaks more stuff, as we saw with progression with the free Battle Pass skin, or even this season where heirlooms are not staying equipped, Steam Deck and Linux are unable to access Apex, and Valkyrie can't even fuel regen well off her feet. When you rely on a unproven thing like AI to kind of drive stuff, you're gonna run into those issues. And the big issues for Apex Legends kinda happened around the time we got the brand new Hot Drop store, which apparently shows you skins that you don't already own, which I would assume there's some level of AI built into that. Once again, not confirmed, just kind of what I'm seeing in connecting the dots. And EA has said that they are going to take it even a step further than this, where they are going to be looking at putting ads in their video games, and Apex Legends is a free-to-play game, I feel like will be a prime target for them to do this. And I'm personally not a big fan of it, but I will say it is free, so I don't really know exactly what to do about it. But if they are going to put ads in video games, and they are going to be selling us more universal heirlooms and add new types of currencies and microtransactions in this game, then all that stuff that we just pointed about being broken needs to be fixed if you're gonna start monetizing things the way that they seem to wanna do. Along with that, it's probably a good idea if you stop laying off the QA team, such as the one in the UK, and the one before that where 300 workers in Baton Rouge were laid off. And ever since then, I mean, Apex Legends has always kinda had like a lot of issues with like audio and footsteps and stuff, but it has progressively gotten worse with more and more microtransactions being added in. Let me know down below, what are your guys' thoughts on the new EA ad integration? And also, what are your thoughts on Lifeline Reborn? Also, don't forget to check out this channel right here where I cover news on Helldivers, Finals, Power World, and so much more. And until next time, Legends, keep slaying the Outlands. I'll see you out there.